Hello, all. Welcome back to Obsessed. I am a very lucky girl today because I have not one of my dear friends, um, but two here today in the studio. First of all, Peter Hussey. Hello, my brother. Hello, <laughs> hello, 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 hello. I'm so excited to have you here I'm, all the way live from New York. We've got oh my here. God, East Coast representation of East your representation. gaze across to the country, right? Yes, I was in New York um, a few maybe a month ago, yeah. to see Merrily We Roll Along. This is the musical theater episode, by the way. To see Merrily We Roll Along <laughs> and Little Shop of Horrors and Wicked with Izzy. But I did um, Little Shop and Merrily with Peter. So although we have discussed those in length on this podcast, <laughs> we are going to do it again. One more time. Okay, with Peter, we are going <laughs> to run it back. Um, and someone DM'd me in response to Peter on my story and was like, it's amazing how you have a network of gays across the country. Just. So Peter's my New York network gay. <laughs> yeah. So that's exciting. And then we have Alexionica, birth name Alexa. Ooh. Hey. He was just going to serve as um, a producer's <laughs> assistant today. And if she wants to comment, she can. At any time, you can chime in. Okay. And if you don't want to, that's an option too. All right. Whatever well, makes you we'll most comfortable. S- we'll Alexa. see where the episode takes us. Welcome to the and corner. then, of course, Kenny Bug and Izzy Bug. Hello. There's Woo. always more space Here in the corner. For, thank you. <laughs> thank you for having me. Um, something that you two might not know is that, and also the general public, is I recorded a musical theater episode as like one of the pilot obsessed episodes. Oh my God, no way. Yep. Already recorded. Couldn't air it. Okay. <laughs> due to, due to horrible. It, it Due to horrible. <laughs> it was missing a certain je ne sais quoi. Mm-hmm. Would that um, be... And that was you. Oh, my God. That's so, sweet. Kenny and Izzy, you have heard everything probably, but I hope you probably forget it. We wiped it. our minds, so yeah, it's all good. You probably forget it. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> well, Brooke, you don't always have to be a star. I know, but you do if you are going to be in the biggest boy band in the world. I gotten so worked up that I had thrown up on myself in my stroller. In my 14-year-old self, I said, those are hot men. Men. And look at them now. They're like... <laughs> Baby, that was kind of just like a casual interest, which I guess maybe a little bit more than casual. <laughs> okay, Peter, let's just intro you a little bit. Okay. Okay. We met through our friend Tristan. Yes. Who um, you guys know from the Glee episode, and I met you like once. A, was it a year ago? No, it was in or two years. It ago. was 2022 because it was when I went to Coachella. It was when I had gotten back. I was here for like a couple days Mm -hmm. staying with Tristan Mm -hmm. when he used to live with Patricia. Yes. Um, And I told Brooke this earlier, but my favorite thing about first time meeting Brooke was that it was tax season. And Mm -hmm. I don't really know a whole lot about like, I guess, this world, the influencer world. Me neither, Peter. And she had walked in. She's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to like even like afford food at this (laughs) point because taxes were so bad. So scared the shit out of me. Um, And I went and did my taxes when I got home. Well, here's what was confusing about that Mm -hmm. is that when I was a teacher, I made about six (laughs) dollars a year and they took like five of them out before they gave me my check. Mm -hmm. So I made like one dollar. Yeah. They weren't taking any money out of my influencer brand deal checks. So I was just like, oh, perfect. Like I don't getting I was just getting full lump sum. No taxes out. Oh, yeah. Um, So I was like, that's awesome. I don't Mm -hmm. have to do that's awesome. I don't have to give away my money. Turns out. They were coming for me later. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so I hadn't put away any <laughs> any sort of funds <laughs> to prepare. And so when I paid my taxes, I paid everything in my checkings in, as well as dipping into my savings. Is that how too. much they took out is just like I can't even imagine like the number because I get angry when I like owe like $300. Oh, it was l- literally everything I had. That's like because I was just spending as if I was yeah, rich. As if you weren't ever going to get taxed. I thought I was. I was yeah. under the impression that I was, mm-hmm. but I went into the hole. <laughs> <laughs> but we rise from the we ashes. Rise from the ashes. <laughs> yep. Which is really exciting. Um, and then Peter, I saw you after that initial meeting. Mm-hmm. I saw you once when I was on the elliptical at Equinox. Yes, we kind of did just like, and you waved, but I wasn't wearing my glasses, so uh, I was. I didn't. I don't know if I waved back. You, you glanced I, in my general direction, okay. which and, was sweet. And that, that caused really nice. me stress. So much stress to the point that when I went to New York <laughs> with Alexa last year and she was like, we're meeting up with Peter. Oh, did you think I was going to hate you? I was nervous because I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I don't know if I waved back to you. 
that one time in Equinox. I can't, I mean, I know you like, I think I was also like about eye level by the time Mm -hmm. you had looked at me. So I think I raised my hand up, but again, no glasses. You probably didn't see, but I don't hold it against you. But you you didn't know that I needed my glasses. No, I mean, I'll forgive, but I'll never forget. Right, right. So I was nervous, but luckily we hit it off. Yeah, really right away, right away. So much so that I had to come back and see you again and yeah. and go see some shows and do these and do some shows. <laughs> so Peter has brought his collection of playbills. How long have you been collecting playbills? Since I moved to New York. So five years. I have like old, old playbills like back at home when I've mm-hmm. gone to New York like before. So those aren't in this stack. So I'm missing about like three or four. But anytime I go and see a show, I grab one. I wish so badly that I had collected, but because I had the idea to start collecting them after I had already seen so like many. a few shows. Yeah. I was like, there's no point because I won't have mm-hmm. a few, which is actually stupid looking yeah. back. Well, the first show I ever saw, which is my favorite show, spoiler, mm-hmm. is Wicked. That was the first one I made sure I went and saw like my second day in New York. Mm-hmm. And so then I collected that, obviously. And then I was just like, oh. And then I, I, my first week in New York, I had a full week of like no work. So I just went and saw show after show after show that whole week. That and that's like how I heaven. collected. Oh my god! It was I had no money to my name after it, hey. but I was happy. And like looking in a mirror. <laughs> mm-hmm. So um, I just started collecting after a while, and then here I am up to I think like almost thirty um, in five years, which I feel like is that six shows a year, which seems low, honestly. But like I guess that feels I don't know. that feels good. Well, I guess if you live in New York, yeah. Well, no, that's, maybe I that need to start good. going to more six shows. Yeah. Depends. I mean, and some of these are like, which we can get into later, but there's like somewhere like rush tickets. There's like lottery, all of that stuff. Yes. The game of cat and mouse that they play on Broadway. Mm -hmm. Now, do you remember what it was that made you first love musical theater? Was it Wicked or was there something before? No, I think. So my favorite movie is The Wizard of Oz. Mm -hmm. So like then when I found out there was a musical that is like the prelude to Wizard of Oz, I was like all for it, but like that was kind of what started it was the Wizard of Oz Mm -hmm. and I was just obsessed with Dorothy. Um, So much so that like um, I had my own pair of ruby red slippers. Um, I went as Elphaba one year. Before I knew she was Elphaba, I just knew her as the Wicked Witch of the West. Wow. So I went as her for Halloween one year, full like black wig, hat, painted myself green. That's crazy that you didn't even know who you were representing. No, I didn't. I did not know what I was getting myself into and now I'm couldn't be worse like more addicted to wicked and now the movie's coming out so which by the way we have decided to meet halfway (laughs) to watch um wicked so i think what did we decide on iowa yeah i want to no (laughs) what would be we really do need to look up what would be the middle ground yeah let's do it you could always look at a map map of u.s oh there's actually a website where you can put in your addresses and it'll tell you where the middle meeting spot is oh Oh, maybe don't put in your address. Right. Maybe the state. Oh, but Penny, they, people really do think of everything. Yeah, and do you need my social as well? That could be good, Peter. Okay, so if you're over here. Yeah, I'm over there. And I'm over here. Would that be Kansas? That looks like <gasps> kind of Kansas City. Which, Wizard of Oz, that could be pretty. <gasps> oh, we have to go to Kansas. Oh, my God. <laughs> We have got to go to Kansas. Okay, movie theaters in Kansas. We could look that up. Oh, that's darling. Um... Okay, Peter, loving that. Right. You know, my first show was Wicked too. Well, I I believe it. And I didn't realize that because I remember I saw the original cast, mm-hmm. so Dina Menzel, Kristen Chenoweth, et cetera. And I guess because it was the 20th anniversary, mm-hmm. that means that it was 20 years ago that I saw Wicked. Oh, that's which a scary is thought. So scary that yeah. I can utter the words, 20 years ago, I. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even tell you what I was doing 20 years ago. So at least you have that timestamp. I wish I didn't. Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're totally good. Um, but yeah, Saw Wicked. And then that's really, I think that in combo with the movie Grease is what okay. kind of got me going into a musical uh-huh. theater obsession. What about Grease specifically? I think I was drawn to Danny Zuko uh-huh. in a way. Fair. I don't know. I think it's like, you know, when you're young and like you're like you have a crush on someone, but you don't really know what it's like to have a crush. So you're just like intrigued. You're just like feeling things. I wasn't even feeling like like, like butterflies. You were feeling butterflies. No, but I was like drawn to him. Okay. And I didn't know. I might have been a crush looking back, but Mm -hmm. like you just don't know. I just for whatever reason was drawn to him. Was it a physical like you were physically drawn to him like his essence or like his music or like 
probably that's what was happening. Okay. But at the time, I didn't know that. So I was just like, like I stand. Yeah. You know? I, I, so then um, my friends and I had to perform both Wicked and Greece, of course. Together, um, we made a little acting troupe. <laughs> I have clips from that that I want to show you guys, but they're horrible quality because it's me recording someone else's computer screen uh -huh. on Snapchat <laughs> while talking and shaking, and then those have since been downloaded from Snapchat. Perfect. So I wish I had better um, visuals for you both. Would you rather see Wicked or Greece first? Wicked I mean, came first. Well, then we can do Wicked first. Okay. Um, so I think this is, what is this feeling? And this is still Camille played Alpha Vi, played Glinda. Mm -hmm. Camille is still my best friend to this day. Oh. Which that. is really sweet. Oh, she, you guys both look darling. She drew that picture of Frankie. Oh. Which is cute. Okay. So this is just the, a singing piece. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Pretty. <laughs> Doing a little up mm -hmm. speed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> oh that oh, was yeah. that was, yeah. I don't have words mm -hmm. that was just really yeah and Camille always got the lead which love her to death. Uh -huh. It did, you know, it's that stays with you. That uh -huh. type of thing stays with you, especially when it's your friends casting. Yeah. Cause you know, it's like uh, looking back, Camille was and still is a great talent, like mm -hmm. studied theater. Mm -hmm. um, but that was always really hard for me. Did you guys have to Camille audition for these roles? We had to audition. Okay. And I did get like, Glinda is a lead too, of course. Yes. But you know, Alphaba is really yeah. She's not too into fine gravity. And then similarly in Greece, that is why I got the role of Danny. Is because Camille got oh, Camille Danny? got Sandy. <laughs> Perfect. So it's like I needed to be a lead, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but that was my other. That was my option. That's pretty. I cannot wait to see you as Danny. Yeah, I can show you that too. Here's one more Wicked for you. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, this is more of a dialogue heavy scene. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah. What's interesting is that we talk about like men, uh, boys voice, like their balls dropping yeah. or whatever. And then their voice is getting deep. The, uh, we don't uh, talk well, about what happens to women's voices. When do you think your balls drop? I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't remember like that. I have no memory of sounding like that. Is this also doing redacted years ago? This I don't, I don't want to say the word again. Yeah. No, you're good. No. How, how many I think would this, this is, have been? I, I think I was 10. So. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> yep. Mm -hmm. Above 10, we'll About, say. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I really do. I would have to say I really love your delivery. I feel like you were giving your all. Thank you so much. And seeing Wicked again for the first time in years. Oh, when you went for the When trip? I went and like heard that line, I was uh -huh. like, oh, like I, yeah, I yeah. delivered. I delivered. Yeah, like I pretty much you know, the same thing, was, I would it say. It was kind of like seeing the same thing. Does anyone have any questions about my performance in Wicked? No questions. Okay. You're definitely lucky that your friends took it as seriously as you. Yeah. Because that's very true. Though, yeah. So. Very lucky. Yeah. I will say we did these um, until we were too old. Mm -hmm. So there is <laughs> there is a full lameness. At what age? So. <laughs> doing 18 feeder. <laughs> College. Okay. And it's I was Eponine. Is that her name? Yeah. Yeah, Eponine. I think so. That and I great. am was like so dead serious singing on my own, making tears come out of my eyes. <laughs> Crying on cue. Crying on cue. I did not know you could do that. And I can't. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we did those two late. We also have some that have been lost. Like the lost episode of SpongeBob Sweeney yeah. has been lost. Oh, and did you play The Young Sweet. Man? <laughs> oh, um <laughs> The Young Man who sings Joanna. Oh my god, I'm forgetting the character's Me too. name. It's all right. But I played that young man. And then in Hairspray, I was Link. You did not get one sing singular, like, the role. No, I know. And looking back, Camille did deserve the role. But at that time, it was just, that's something that stays with you. Did you ever put up a stink being like, no, I want, like, did you ever want to be Tracy? Well, yeah, of Tracy, course. you wanted to be? Of course. Uh huh. Who got yeah. Tracy? Camille got Tracy? Yeah. 
Oh, that's kind of rude. Yeah. Um, but also looking back, my friend Lindsay is the director of each of these films. Okay. And she barely put herself on screen. Okay. Which is incredibly like looking back to give your two friends the lead role. I would never. And she gave herself like a small role each time. Like that's. I don't know that emotion that's, at all. No, no I would have to be front and center. That's, I'd be like, yeah. camera back here. That's selfless behavior. So this episode Who is dedicated to Who was Dr. Dillon in that clip? Lindsay. Oh, Camille's sister, okay. Sophia. And all then right. if you look closely in, in this clip, my brother was also, <laughs> sorry. My brother was also somewhere in here. Like literally six years old. Is that him on the That's floor? Him. Is he Bach or is he just on? Yeah, the... he's Bach. Oh, okay, nice. Mm -hmm. Good Perfect. call. Thank okay, you. are you ready to see um, Danny? I, yeah, I cannot wait. So for at this. this point, this was probably one year later, but I guess this is kind of when my balls dropped. Okay. Is it, so we're going to be doing different voice in this? Iteration? I don't know if it's so much different voice. We'll find that out in a second, but it's definitely nose coming in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Didn't you have sideburns in this too? Yeah. I think, it, mm -hmm. yeah, balls Came definitely dropped. Mm hmm. Let me see if I can access that for me. Okay. Um, here, we'll start with a dialogue heavy. Piece. Okay, perfect. And this is Camille, of course, mm -hmm. as Sandy. Hold on for me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'll start over. <laughs> <laughs> side mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That's cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You really butched it up. I, I literally like put everything I had into that. I feel like at the beginning when she bumps into you, I feel like that was the moment your balls dropped. Like right oh that second. Oh my God, second. we might have captured that yeah. on screen. That's really precious that you'll have that forever. You can show your kids mm -hmm. one day. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I remember I actually showed my rabbi this piece because I was in the middle of doing bat mitzvah classes. So I had was so I was literally so excited about it. You remember it. his thoughts on it? No, I don't actually. Okay. But I, I, can, I can always reach out. Ask. But I was like just like so proud of this. Yeah. That I needed everyone. I don't know why you wouldn't be proud of that. Yeah. Here's a here's an artistic liberty that we took <laughs> okay. with Greece. Mm -hmm. Um the final song we decided to do in the hot tub or actually I think I decided <laughs> to do in the hot tub because it does seem that Camille is on land <laughs> sure on yeah that's nice yeah yeah mm -hmm. oh yeah artistic choice <laughs> and you can tell she's got the talent yeah not wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> Showed that to my rabbi. <laughs> not doing pants. Okay, we were not doing pants at that time. Hey, guys, we're going to take a break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Aloe Moves. I used to be one of those people who thought they didn't have time to prioritize wellness, but I recently came across Aloe Moves, and now my whole mindset has changed. The app makes it easy to keep my wellness routine on track because they have everything in one place. There's yoga, Pilates, fitness classes, mindfulness, self-care tips, healthy recipes, and so much more. From beginner to advanced, Alla Moves has the flow or class that will fit your schedule. Their classes range from five minutes to an hour depending on what I'm feeling that day. If you wanna get a good sweat in, you've gotta try their award-winning workouts like sweat-inducing yoga flows, hit classes, or reformer Pilates workouts with or without weights. Or find stress relief with meditations, affirmations, face yoga, gua sha, dry brushing, and journaling for those quiet moments. When it comes to sleep, it's just as important as fitness and nutrition. Ever since I watched The Art of Sleep on Aloe Moves, I've been falling asleep faster and staying asleep longer. The Art of Sleep has to be one of my favorite features of Aloe Moves. Sometimes it's so hard to fall asleep after being on a screen all day, and the nightly ritual they helps me create actually makes me fall, and more importantly, stay asleep. Unlock your personal wellness routine with Alla Moves. Go to allamoves.com now and use code OWB for an exclusive 30-day free trial and enjoy 20% off an annual membership. That's allamoves.com, code OWB, allamoves.com, code OWB. Hey guys, we're gonna take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Daily Harvest. 
When it comes to reaching my goals, I've realized it's not just about finding shortcuts, but rather about embracing sustainable, healthy habits. And that's why I love Daily Harvest. I love how they simplify the process and take all the work out for me. Daily Harvest makes it easy to meet my goals and stick with them. They take the planning, prep, and cleanup out of cooking by delivering my favorite veggie and fruit packed meals straight to my door. With Daily Harvest, I'm getting tons of plant-based options built on organic fruits and vegetables that are easy to prep and free of gluten, fillers, seed oils, added starches, and sugars. It takes the guesswork and effort out of eating food I know is good for me. Some people think eating healthy means eating boring meals, but Daily Harvest has so many options for any time of day. My favorite meal has been the butternut squash and rosemary soup. It's so thick, and I love the garlic and rosemary flavors. By using only recyclable or compostable packaging when possible, Daily Harvest is doing their part to take care of our earth. So why not limit your waste and feel good? Create healthy habits that last with Daily Harvest. For a limited time only, go to dailyharvest.com slash OWB to get $30 off your first box plus free shipping. That's dailyharvest.com slash OWB for $30 off your first box and free shipping. dailyharvest.com slash OWB. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I good. guess, Peter, that's really kind of when I started to love musical theater was around that time. I wish I had stuff like this. Like, yeah. I mean, I have my memories of like all my Wizard of Oz stuff and like everything, but I like, I could probably could dig up a photo of me as the Wicked Witch of the West. Yeah. Like I could definitely find that somewhere. And I did a draw on love... a mole, oh, which was really perfect. pretty. That's really I kept pretty. having my mom kind of <laughs> touch it up throughout the night. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I will say like, Wicked is cute to watch, mm -hmm. but once we get to Greece, then I'm, I kind of, I'm like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. You know, it gets a little bit harder to yeah. watch as as the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Especially because it's on. one year later, so it's, it's one year. You learn yeah. more about the world and yeah. how people might react to something like that. Yeah, exactly. Um, also, really qu quickly, want to talk about a show that I was obsessed with that no one talks about, and mm -hmm. I know this isn't in your Playbill collection, so I want to talk about it mm -hmm. really quick. Next to normal. Did you ever? Have I have you not, heard. I've heard of it, bits and pieces of it, but I've heard people are like gung ho about it, but I like have not scene i've heard mm -hmm. like on my little broadway mm -hmm. shuffle that i have about once a week yeah it always comes on and i do love the soundtrack so it's incredible it really walked so dear evan hansen could run right. it's like the same type of like family dynamic kind of like a little i guess dear evan hansen's not really edgy but this was definitely had some some edge to it it just i don't know there's a dear evan hansen vibe to it it was aaron to i love him yeah and also Megan Fahey of White Lotus. Oh, no way. Yeah, believe it or was not. Was she Broadway first? She was Broadway first, and I was trying to figure out how I knew her for all of White Lotus because this wasn't on her IMDb, of okay. course, because it was Broadway. Was it an on-Broadway production? They don't put Broadway on IMDb? I don't think so. That's weird. I think it's just film credit and TV credit. Yeah. But um, I had spent so much time trying to figure out how I knew her, and then it was a really beautiful connection that I made. Um, back to my childhood. I love that. But I saw this. My mom took me to see it right after she told me my parents were getting divorced. Yep. And it was a show about like fucked up families. Mm -hmm. So it really like struck me so oh deeply. My God, I can't imagine. And I had that was the first time I went on the train by myself. I kept going back by myself to see it because I was so addicted How to it. How many times did you see it? Probably 10. Oh my God, you're kidding. No, I'm, I was literally, it was like my whole life. This was oh probably right before Glee. Oh, we were kind then, of gearing up yeah, for kind something of getting even in the bigger. Headspace. Kind of yeah, getting yeah, yeah. Headspace. But let me just tell you how good this plot is, okay? It's not going to spoil anything because you can't even see it anymore. It was only on Broadway for not long, but I'm going to tell you the whole plot. Okay. Starts off with like fun, happy. Oh, like our family's like a little quirky, but like we love each other. Mm -hmm. And that's all that matters. Then as it goes on, you start to kind of put the pieces together that there's something like a little bit off mm -hmm. especially with the mom okay um as she makes many trips to her psychiatrist okay. and they're singing about meds that are like a lot more than just like lexapro or like standard garden variety antidepressant they're like like meds heavy that i'm heavy heavy types of meds so you're kind of like what is her deal what is her deal what, yeah also i forgot to say it's very much nuclear family mom dad daughter What's the opposite of daughter? Son. Son. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> daughter, That's a tough one. <laughs> daughter, brother. And it's very clear that the mom favors him. 
Okay. So that's like a lot of the sister shtick is like singing about like how her mom favors. Is the sister the main character in this? It's like female I would lead? say it is very much in, like all four of them. The okay. mom, dad, got it, got it, got and it. brother and sister and sister's boyfriend. Who is Megan and Aaron playing? Brother and sister. Okay. So they were the young ones. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the parents? I do. Father that I saw, because I don't think, I did not see the original cast. Mm -hmm. I saw some of the original cast. They were still there in some mm -hmm. more. Brian Darcy James. Oh, you're kidding. Who I adore. He oh was in God. Smash, right? Yes, he was yep. in Smash. And then the mom was Alice Ripley, whose voice I have kind of a, a tough time with. It's like okay. a different kind of voice. I'm not, I'm like not very like her. classical theater, almost like opera. Okay. Which like didn't make sense mm -hmm. with the vibe of the show. So I ha I do have to skip her songs, but. Got it, yeah. Yeah. So then the daughter starts doing drugs mm -hmm. with her boyfriend, kind of just like her rebellious phase. Okay, then we have the finale, the final scene of act one mm -hmm. is um, everyone's gathered around the dinner table, sister, her boyfriend, the dad, and the mom starts bringing out a birthday cake and she's singing happy birthday. Mm -hmm. And then everyone goes dead silent. And it's like, what could possibly be happening? Peter, the son has been dead the whole time. Aaron has I, been dead. He the whole has been time? dead the whole time. It's his birthday. How but did you, she, like, how did it? You don't play know on because she's speaking to him as if he's there. Is the cake for him? The cake is for him. So it's like a dead cake it's or whatever yeah. you would call that. Yeah. So they like celebrate his death. No, they they were everyone like went dead silent because they know that like the mom <gasps> oh, is like and that would really the meds. struggling, really struggling because she's imagining her almost son is... like yeah she's seeing him. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, I and I know, and I it never out. occurred to me that like no one else was having direct interactions with him besides the mom until all of a sudden it became very clear. God. Isn't that crazy? That's kind Wait, of like that's... the Shutter Island of yes. Broadway. Like where they're, like they we're, were not doing the twists time. like that anymore. No, I yeah. can't even think of a show that would be like that. I see why you're saying Dear Evan Hansen with an edge. Because mm -hmm. right. everyone was at least alive in Dear Evan Hansen. Well, except for... Considering. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So she did, they did take her to get electroshock therapy. Oh, okay. okay. And then for like a minute, she was not, she forgot about her son, but then it all kind of came crashing down mm -hmm. at the end. And then everyone goes their own ways. Like every, they get divorced, which mm -hmm. was sweet to see considering the place I was in yeah, at the time. In my life at the time. And then the very last scene of the play is like the dad is on his own. And then he sees, he sees the son. And then, and then cut fake go black. black. So it's oh like, oh no, God. is he now having Seeing. similar experiences or is like this how he's coping with his grief finally, now that he's on his own, you can take, there's a lot of meaning. Yeah, take interpretation, from that last yeah, scene. yeah, yeah. But like it's the first time we see the son interacting with anyone besides the mom, him and the dad. So finally. the daughter never no. sees this brother at all. No, not that I remember. Do they ever give you a clue of like how he died or you just like as a he died? Like at, when he was like one or something. Okay, that's weird that they would have him like played as like an right. older person if we like never saw that. I think like the she just like imagine him growing him up. to be I'm alive like, the whole time. Wait, that's and you went and saw that 10 times. 10, uh, ten times, which is like an interesting show to see 10 times because yeah. it's like very upsetting. Yeah, oh, I mean, yeah, it's mm -hmm. not it didn't sound too happy, but Yeah. But great soundtrack. <laughs> Moral of the story? Moral of the story? Great soundtrack. Incredible soundtrack. <laughs> I'll have to listen. Yeah. We can, we can listen yeah, in the car after. Yeah, we can listen in the car, ride home, and I yeah. can kind of we take can skip you through. the mom parts. Skip, we all yeah. have to. <laughs> yeah. What's tough is when she's in songs with others, oh, so you and you just have to kind of get through her. and bear it. Yeah. Yeah. Hunker down. And then, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Perfect. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Okay, I'm really excited to move on to the most anticipated part. Oh my God. Of the recording. Peter has brought his playbook collection. He's going to go through mm -hmm. in order from least favorite to favorite. Yeah. And as you guys know, we saw Merrily We Roll Along and Little Shop of Horrors together. He's going to rank them. Do a reveal. Do a reveal. Live Big on reveal. camera. I have seen, <laughs> he did give me this presentation in private. 
Yeah. So a little backstory mm-hmm. on my Playbill collection. I do quarterly refreshes of it, either if I've seen shows mm-hmm. per quarter, things like that. I'll go ahead and refresh, stack them in. So this is post Q1 mm-hmm. refresh. So we have just entered Q2. So this is about to be a Q2 refresh. So I won't have to do it again until July. And I've only seen the Q1. You've only seen Q1. And so there have been changes. There have been slight changes as of right before I got here. Mm-hmm. And I kind of forget where Little Shop and Merrily went. So I'm really excited. Mm-hmm. Do you have anything that you want to say about Little Shop or Merrily before we get into it and the experience that we had? I mean, I have so much to say, yeah. but I will say just overall, mm-hmm. truly like the most unreal weekend I've had ever, ever, just because it was back to back. The cast was insane. We were doing DC, Darren Chris, Evan Rachel Wood, who mm-hmm. is in Westworld. I personally know her. Or it, the from little Frozen voice two. from Frozen 2. And that's just like how everything is connected. Like she's in Frozen 2. So is Jonathan, Jonathan Groff. Groff. It all comes who back. Who was in Glee with Darren. It, it's all, it's literally, it literally it's like all. Cyclical. Yeah, I love that all about the Broadway back world. To, yeah. yeah. Which is really like, it's just so beautiful. That, and especially like, I feel like a lot of Broadway stars are now becoming like film and television stars. Like yes. all the people that I've like known for like a while are like now getting their flowers per se so it's like nice to like see that world come yeah. to the forefront and vice versa like a lot of people from tv are heading to broadway yeah but we can get into stunt casting too because i have a couple things to say about oh. that <laughs> yeah i'd love to we i guess little shop was stunt casting right no because darren, darren to me is, is broadway. musical yeah like i it's like like reality stars going on so to for it to be stunt casting do they have to be bad in my opinion. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Like, like I know like one was like, I don't know if I should say names. What was the show? Could you say the Chicago show? does a lot of stunt casting. That's okay. questionable. Okay. And it, cause it's been running for long. So usually the shows that run for longer mm-hmm. start to run out of people that want to do it. So Got then they it. kind of just fish in the barrel and grab who will totally. take it. Um, but do you want me to dive into this now or do you want me to, Oh wait, speaking more about the weekend. Yeah. Um, if you have anything else. No, I mean like I will say that like both shows were great. Merrily specifically, Sondheim shows can get a really bad rap. I've yeah. liked everything that I've seen. The one I haven't seen that I would like to see is Sunday in the Park with George, but I haven't seen that one yet. Um, but I've heard that one's one of his more polarizing ones. Like either you love or hate. Like I, think I feel this like this was my first Sondheim. Did you see Company? No. Okay. We'll see where Company is in here. And the original Merrily We Roll Along only lasted for like seven oh, yeah. or Bonds, 11 right? runs because yeah. people hated it so much, Yeah, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Like it's a shame Jonathan wasn't around back then. I know. Yeah. He'd be rolling in his grave. Really? Well, I guess in the womb. He, yeah. <laughs> he's rolling in the yeah, womb. He's rolling in the womb. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, there's very few like shows that I see at this point that like really like, I'll tell everyone like you have to go mm-hmm. and see, like it's like an optional like no, it's is not that an not, option. Yeah, not, 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 <laughs> not optional. Not optional. Um, no. These two, I literally ran and told everyone, like, go see it. Specifically with like this one, right? The cat before they're all gone, like, go and see it with them. This one is they've already cycled to a new cast, right? But I do love the theater that they do little shopping because they've been. Someone told us the story of it that it was like they do it. It's that production will only do it in that theater. Because it's so tiny and so uh-huh. compact, which Little Shop used to be like a right. more like, I forget Who the word for it. told us that? Was it the Usher? It could have been the Usher that asked if I was Zac Efron. Zac Efron, yes. <laughs> are you, are Zac, you Zac Efron? Efron? Yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You and Zach right Yeah. Now. Yep. Yep. Yeah. That was like such a teeny tiny theater and it made it like, I yeah. felt like I was on like in the play. Oh yeah. And well, cause what's funny was, is that for Little Shop, we were in the second row, mm-hmm. which is like, cause it's such a small theater. You basically like, I think probably third row is probably where you should feel like you're in the crowd. Right. We were feeling like we were on stage. Right. Um, and I also really just loved like, cause I feel like in like soundtracks and stuff like that, like you don't really get to like feel like the passion sometimes behind it. And Darren had that one note that we couldn't stop thinking about for a while. And I'm just like, we don't have that in the recording, you know? Well, you know, what's, it's just, it is all <laughs> connected. I cannot stress that enough. The original Broadway cast recording of Little Shop, it's not Darren, it's Jonathan. Jonathan. Okay. Who's not doing an accent, which we talked about too. Yeah, we did talk about Darren how Darren full. took the, liber- the liberty of a full, <laughs> thick Brooklyn accent, which shocked us because Jonathan did not do no, that not in his recording. No. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. I would be really curious to see Jonathan, Jonathan do an accent. Because also like, 
Seymour, who is who Darren and Jonathan played, like mm-hmm. is supposed to be like super nerdy yeah, and they like, make a lot of jokes about him being like super unattractive yes. and like gross. Yeah. Which I some of the most handsome men in the yeah, world. The men they're getting to play Seymour are like some of my top people in the world. So I'm like, what does that say about me? In in the world. And Darren, like I maybe just because I saw it, like I could see how they could make him like a little nerdy. Yeah. I mean like the glasses and yeah. like the, his cute little curly hair. I'm even saying cute little curly hair. So like, it's not a thing. But Jonathan, I, I, I don't like, I can't even imagine him in a role <laughs> that's remotely even just, no, like, I would I probably can't. have to jump on stage and be like, take it back. Yeah. Don't say that. About yeah. Him. So I'd be really curious. I hope that he has the opportunity to reprise that role. He might, maybe after this, he goes back. You know who needs to be Seymour? Yeah. Andrew Barth Feldman. He would be he would, so good. And that would actually be, because he's nerdy, I guess one would say. <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute. He's No, he's cute. But like, I feel like you look at like Jonathan and you look at yeah, he's, Andrew, ABF. And like, if a random person was like, hey, who would you have like play Seymour? I think most people might point to ABF. He would be so good. And when he was on, he was saying that he would, he would love, love to do love that. Love to do that. And it, it like seemed like. Didn't he like, say he got to see it with Jonathan? I think he was saying that. I don't. Maybe he mm-hmm. he definitely had talked to Jonathan recently, which okay. is, was my yeah. takeaway. Yeah, and saw him in his on his bike. Oh, with the helmet. With the helmet. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I wish I could see that. I still have never seen him. I, I haven't. I haven't seen him on a bike yet. Yeah, but, but that you saw that's him a in, goal. <laughs> you that's saw him goal. in one of these that's in here. Um, yeah. Do you want me to start this now? Yeah. Or do we have anything else we want to talk about before I get into that? No, you can start. Okay. Yeah. And I'm starting from least start, start to from least okay. Favorite. So let me. I need to clear some space up. Where do you keep these in your apartment? On my TV stand, mm, kind of because it's easily display. accessible, and I'll just like I can. They're always with me. Yeah, you know, they're in eyesight just mm-hmm. in case. One time, I did think someone had stolen one from my apartment, and I like sent a really scathing <laughs> message to everyone. I was like, "Which one of you took?" <laughs> I think it was my dear Evan Hansen playbill. <laughs> yeah, and I had accidentally put it in a drawer. Um, for some random reason. I think I was cleaning and I put all the playbills in a drawer. That one had slipped out somehow, but I was really, could have lost a lot of friends with what I was saying. (laughs) Oh, you were angry. Yeah, Mm -hmm. all right. Um, Okay, Okay. starting at the, so I counted right before we started, there's 28 in here. Okay. So I'll try and do rapid fire until we get maybe like top five or 10. Okay, that sounds good. Um, So at the bottom is actually a recent one, Um, Bad Cinderella. The by far the worst thing I've ever seen in my entire life. <laughs> Didn't Andrew also talk about that? Does anyone remember? Was he saying it was bad or just talking about it? He said it was bad and He's, was like, but it, they were so nice. Yeah, yeah. the in cast. Was, I felt really Andrew bad way. for the cast because the story goes that this premiered on the West End. Um, and I think it's Andrew Lloyd Webber. Um, and I guess he's, I did not know this apparently. He's like a huge like a-hole. And I was like, oh, like I did not like know that. Uh-huh. And he on the West End on closing night, basically like completely like blamed the cast. I was like, guess they all can't be winners and stuff like that. But because he's like a world renowned Broadway guy, they're like, oh, we'll just bring it to Broadway. And then it closed like within three months. It was horrible. Oh my God. No good it about? Songs. I asked, I think I. It's just like, she's, she's like, so the quote is like, I'm not your good Cinderella, I'm your bad Cinderella. So she's like rebellious Cinderella. Uh, I don't know if you've ever seen that clip of when they like announced it. She does like the little like spray paint where she writes a B and a D because it's like this. And then she did like the spray uh, paint D. No. So she's just like a bad girl who like doesn't need a prince but and like like it's all the like basically the same story where she but like in this one she's more so just like trying to be anti that yeah and then like at the end she still just ends up with the prince and it was just horrible oh perfect we can leave the original cinderella alone at this yeah point. i mean there's so many iterations of it yeah. at this point that like we We're can good. put that yeah. one to bed okay. um I'm sorry next about one which is i remember when i showed brooke this she was in shock shock and horror we're doing mean girls the musical shock i and horror. Did not like this. I saw it with, I think, almost the whole original cast. Um, I think it would have been below this if there was someone else that I won't say who was playing Aaron for a little bit. Um, Aaron Samuels. Mm-hmm. Um, I heard he was not great. Yeah. But I don't. I just didn't really like the music. I love the movie. So I think it's hard for me when it's movie to musical. Mm-hmm. If it's musical to movie, like totally fine. So I think if like maybe it would have just come out as a movie as is, maybe I would have been more okay with it. Have you okay seen the movie? It. 
Yeah. Oh, the, no, the I tried to watch movie, on the, the plane. Musical. I tried to watch on the plane. I just kept fast forwarding to Renee Rapp's parts because yeah. I love her. She's, yeah, she was. But incredible. other than that, like, I really, like, just didn't like, like, I didn't find the songs really catchy. The only one I really liked was the one about, like, being a slut on Halloween. I think it's called Halloween. I'm, like, so shocked by all this because I love Mean Girls the Musical, and that's a skip song for me. Oh, we're doing complete opposite. We are on the complete opposite. That was the only one where I like, I didn't laugh like the whole time. I didn't think it was funny. I don't know. Maybe I was just in a bad mood. Maybe. I'm like a little bit shell shocked. Is the movie tried and true to like, do you find that it's tried and true? Because I don't really remember Mm -hmm. a lot about like this other than just like, I didn't like it. I mean, it's like tried and true to the plot. Yeah. But like, there's not much you can do with Mean Girls. The plot, it's just is what it is Completely. but they took a lot of liberties with the music mm-hmm. um which i didn't love yeah because i prefer the original so Broadway you prefer the musical more than by, the like, movie by far okay yeah as a movie i probably wouldn't like the movie i only got it i only got like 30 minutes in oh, by the I time don't we think, were landing yeah, i don't think it's it's necessary okay yeah. perfect especially if i feel like this right. already about it, i probably don't need to do right. that right Okay, what is next? Sometimes I forget the other. Oh, this was when I went and saw an off stage or off Broadway version of Avenue Q. I just don't like puppets really, mm-hmm. <laughs> and they're like inappropriate puppets. Oh so yeah. So they're like banging on stage totally. and all that stuff, and I just like again just didn't really find it that enjoyable. Couldn't tell you one song from it. Yeah. Um. Couldn't tell you the plot. It was like well, this was like that week that I did like five. Mm-hmm. This really sucked because it was the last show that I had planned. And my oh. boyfriend was really hyping it up. And I had had a really great week of shows. And then to end on this garbage oh. was just horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Peter, I'm so sorry. I felt sick to my stomach. It was the worst. I've never seen it. I'm not gonna. No. Yeah. I don't really. I think at this point, I don't. If they brought it back, I'd be really. I think it actually. No, it won something really big. I think it, it won a Tony. I'm just like, why? Why are we doing so many new shows or bringing back old bad shows and we're not bringing back rent and we let yeah. next to normal fly under the radar. Like, well, now I want to see next to normal because yeah. now I need to like, now that I know what happens, but I still think I would be in shock. Why is spring awakening not been brought back? I know. It's just like, I need hairspray back too. So, so, yeah. Someone I needs need, to yeah. kind of get their priorities. Okay. In order. We could probably talk to them yeah. I, when I get back. I'll yeah. talk to them. Mm-hmm. Um, next is Moulin Rouge. I just don't like a jukebox musical. Like mm-hmm. I like an original song. Right. And so this is pretty tried and true to the movie if you've seen it. I've never it. seen the movie, which is actually It's with Erwin shocking. McGregor and Nicole Kidman. Um, that Again, that movie I don't mind. Mm-hmm. I just like, this had Aaron Tveit in it, which uh-huh. was great. Um, so he's great. He, and he really does, like, is like Broadway's, Broadway's golden baby. boy. Yeah. And um, I think I, yeah, he was in it that night. Um, but yeah, I just like, it's because it's all songs I've heard before. And I think a lot of them are Elton John songs. Yeah. Um, okay. Cause like your song, yeah, and then Elton John song. That's oh, like the pinnacle like one. You might, yeah. Do you like a jukebox musical? I don't know. I don't think I've seen one. What's an What's another one? Um. Well, they did head Mama over Mia. heels. Mamma Mia is a jukebox. Yeah, that's I do. the music of ABBA. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you maybe would like this. Yeah, maybe. I would. Um. There was head over heels. Do you heels. not like Mamma Mia? No, I love Mamma Mia. I'm probably not making any sense, <laughs> but like I guess I like ABBA more. Well, also in this one, they're doing like hold on, I can like look at the song. Like they're doing like Chandelier by Sia. Like Mamma Mia is just like all ABBA. They were going all over. Oh, the they place. didn't do the same. Is no, the they didn't movie do, a musical. The movie is a musical as well. So they're not obviously not doing Chandelier in no, 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 the movie. No, they're not doing. <laughs> they're not swinging from the chandelier. <laughs> I can tell you that much. No, so they added more like updated songs, and that's why I don't think I liked this okay. as much. But there's obviously more music in the show than there is in the movie. Okay. So they, I think they had to fill space, but I just didn't like it. Okay. Hi guys. We're going to take a break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, Today Ticks. It's cold outside. It's boring inside. So why not go out and do something you've never done before? I'm sure a lot of you have, but if you've never been to the theater or a Broadway show, it's seriously such a fun and special thing to do on a night out. Whether you're planning a date or just need a break from the same evening on the couch, I've got the best way to get tickets to shows and other fun events in your city, Today Ticks. Today Ticks is the best night out with the best value on tickets to amazing things going on all around you. Getting tickets is as easy as ordering takeout. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love takeout, but it can just get old at some point. Just go in the Today Ticks app or visit todayticks.com and scroll through their offerings. There's stuff you've always wanted to check out and stuff you probably never hear about otherwise. Then you check out in just a few taps and get your tickets sent right to your phone. They've even got tickets to shows on Broadway and the West End and in other cities across the country and around the world. 
and you can book a show in advance or be spontaneous and check out what's on for tonight. We just saw Wicked in New York and it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. There are also such great upcoming shows like Rachel McAdams and Mary Jane and book adaptations like The Notebook and Water for Elephants. Today Ticks also gives you access to exclusive pre-sales, lotteries, and specially priced rush tickets. Go to todaytix.com slash obsessed and use promo code obsessed to get $20 off your first Today Ticks purchase. That's promo code obsessed at todaytix.com slash obsessed. todaytix.com slash obsessed. You guys, we're going to take a break to thank our sponsor, Lumi. If I did think of a time when I personally smelled my worst... It would be probably maybe right now, <laughs> if I had to guess. Yeah. Thankfully, Lumi whole body deodorant lets me smell my best every day, and so can you guys. Unlike certain other deos, Lumi is powered by mandelic acid to deliver outrageous 72-hour odor control everywhere from your pits to your feet and even your privates. And I have a special offer just for you guys. New customers get 15% off all Lumi products with their exclusive code and link. Use code OWB at lumideodorant.com. L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. I love Lumi because it's literally an all-in-one. I don't have to carry deodorant and wipes, and I can also reapply whenever I need to. I also love that it was created by a woman. An OBGYN saw firsthand how normal Bia was, being misdiagnosed and mistreated. So she created Lumi, and now it's clinically proven to block odor for up to 72 hours. Lumi is baking soda-free, paraben-free, and pH balanced. They have a variety of scents, and my favorite is the Lavender Sage. Lumi's starter pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and also free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get 15% off all Lumi products with our exclusive code OWB. And if you combine the 15% off with the already discounted starter pack, that equals over 40% off their starter pack. Use code OWB for 15% off your first purchase at lumideodorant.com. That's code OWB at L-U-M-E-D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T dot com. Good to know. Controversial. Um, this one's really low, which I feel like might surprise people because I love the song Journey to the Past. Anastasia. I think it's just, again, because I loved the movie so much. Mm-hmm. I'm just kind of like... I don't know if we needed a stage adaptation, but the girl, I forget her, like Chrissy something, the main girl in this, is w- one of the best people I've ever seen in my entire life. Like she holds this one note in Journey to the Past that is like it, like 45 seconds long. And I'm like, I got out of breath for her. I was just like, I don't know how she did it. And like no vibrato, no nothing, just like a consistent note th- all, all the way through. And I was like in shock. Wow. I like would consider myself someone like well versed with Broadway, but like mm-hmm. talking to you and like talking to Andrew when he was on mm-hmm. and talking to other Broadway people, I like it's I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Vibrato? <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I know what oh. Broadway is, but like these shows. It's just like You would I feel like you would like this soundtrack. But I guess I have to like You know, I, I love like a modern like everything after rent. Like Dear Evan Hansen. And then maybe not next normal. I'll play Journey to the Past. You haven't heard that one? Mean Girls the Musical. No, I haven't. What's your favorite song from Mean Girls? Probably Someone Gets Hurt, maybe? Okay, that's a good one. I feel like most people say Apex Predator. Yeah, I was, I was thinking of that, yeah. but I think Someone Gets Hurt. Okay, that's yeah. a good one. Yeah, thanks, Peter. Um, I don't really have anything else out there to say that. It's very similar to the movie as well, so it's like, I guess maybe because I know what's going to happen in a lot of these because I've already seen the movie. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I'm just like not as excited. Totally. Um... Mr. Saturday Night was I went to go see it in previews, oh. <laughs> so, starring Billy Crystal, um, who voices Mike Wazowski. Yeah, um, you know Megan had a picture of Billy Crystal framed next to her bed when she was little. <laughs> for how long? I don't know, but like, like young, young. For like, for like, he's cute, or just like she oh, loved she was him. in love with him. Yeah, wow, which I, really, I love. That's, that's really all pretty. I think about when I see Billy. Yeah, I see. don't know how I'd be able, like, how I'd feel about like rolling over, like waking up and seeing Billy Crystal next to my bed, but. I, I, I'd feel fine. I guess it's not the most like alarming thing you could see next no, to it's someone's like, bed. Yeah. You'd see like a serial killer or something yeah. like Charles Manson. Yeah. No, I'd definitely rather Billy Crystal. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I actually take back what I said. <laughs> um, but this is basically just about a guy that I think he used to be a big talk show host and then like his career, don't know, as he got older because of ageism. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a lot of like Jewish humor, which I don't really get. Oh. Um, 
Like there's at one point he does a Yiddish scat, which I thought was funny. A Yiddish scat? Scat. Like yabba dabba dabba. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Something a little bit like oh, that. Oh, wait, sorry. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, perfect. Um, so um, that part made me laugh, but then like thought back on it. I was just like, wait, I don't like know what he was saying because I think he was yeah. speaking. Sometimes with like Jewish humor and Yiddish words, I'll laugh like, ah, yeah, I get it. And I don't, I have no okay. idea what anyone's talking You're just about, along. but I have to pay my respects. Yeah. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. Um, but it was funny. My one friend that I went with was, I think the reason I didn't like this so much was that the person next to me who is not Jewish either was like almost fell out of his chair <laughs> laughing and I was just like I, like I'm had a pretty good sense of humor like mm-hmm. I don't like I don't think it's that but like he was like in tears <laughs> was it like self-deprecating yeah it's just a lot of like I mean I'm trying to think of like who would be you know like Mel Brooks yeah like a lot of like that humor okay, where it's just yeah. kind of like bazinga, like mm-hmm. kind of like that. Okay. Back to my like Yiddish old, guy. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, so it was just like, it, it was funny. The songs were good. It had Billy a was singing? Bean. Yeah, he was singing in it. Can he sing? I had no idea. I mean, like, not like. I guess Mike Wazowski has a little solo. <laughs> and what? But that thing back where <laughs> it came from, we're <laughs> so help me. me. <laughs> <laughs> or when he's on the chair. Yeah, he does That little sing. stool. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. And it had Sh- Shoshana Bean in it, who's great. Who's that? She's just like a big Broadway girl. Oh, I see. I, yeah. You're Which I, well, <laughs> sorry on your own show. I mm-hmm. feel horrible. It's all right. Um, and then, okay, this is a twofer. Um, Harry mm-hmm. Potter and the Cursed Child, the only play within this I'm not a big play girly. Mm-hmm. Um, the one play I'm also missing, speaking of plays, did you ever see Take Me Out? No. Oh, you would have loved it. Of course not. I don't know anything about Broadway, <laughs> yeah. apparently. Um, Take Me Out is a play, before I get into these, um, it's like a gay play. So it's about a um, baseball team, and they're all like secretly gay. Oh. And there's full frontal nudity. Oh. Full fr- shower scene. Do you know Jesse Williams from Grey's Anatomy? Yeah. He's in it, and there's leaked footage of what he's working with down there. Oh, pretty. To his knee. <laughs> to his knee. And I'm just like... And, and I was saw, in, I was in like that? 34Q in the back. Like it, I could see it like it was right in front That's of my insane. face. Just like hitting me in the wow. face. Like that was how crazy it was. And I was like, if I And they I took were, that off? Broadway? Yeah, because it, 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 yeah, it was because it was around for a good bit. Like it wasn't like, it was around for, I want to say like a year and a half, which is longer than a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was just thinking like his poor castmate, like I wouldn't be able to go up on stage next to that. This is very noticeably everything else was sort of yes. small. But it's, I mean, it's a good play like overall, but that is really the scene that kind of brings that, it all together. Yeah, that's what really you keep defines the plot to. there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I find myself yeah. thinking about that often. Yeah. Um, but Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, I know you saw this and, Me and Alexa, Alexa, you saw, saw that it. Together. Really good. Yeah. Yep. But yours was one part, yes. one singular thing. So, the, yes, with, with an intermission. Yeah. <laughs> but you didn't have to leave the theater at any We did point. not have to leave the theater, which I wish. Knowing what I know now, I wish that would have been the case right. because they used to have it in two parts. This is part one and part two. Um, so you'd have to watch part one, mm-hmm. leave the theater for about, I want to say two or three hours that and is then insane. come back. I took a nap like in between it. I felt horrible when I woke up just because like Broadway is just every, anytime I see, go see a Broadway show, like I immediately pass out after I'm just so exhausted yeah, with all the excitement. Um, and I'm like, oh my God, I have to go back. And both of these, I think were two hours long. Like each part was two hours long. So it was like four hours sprinkled in with like a two hour intermission. And it was just like, it was great. And I think that, I don't know if they had it by the time you guys saw it, but you know, when they do the time turner mm-hmm. and the whole stage like lighting, yes. like shakes, yes. that to me was like literal magic. And I know it's just lighting and like whatever. And then the Dementors fly around and I literally was like, I thought they were real. Yeah, like, it the was Dementors, like, we were horrified. We were like trying to see the ropes that they were attached to, we were Couldn't like, no, him. nothing. I, I, it was I amazing. genuinely felt like, I, like they're doing some sort of magic. There's something they're not telling us. Yeah. Like they're doing magic. Really great. What would you call that? Not stage direction. Stage. Production effect. value. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Is that where we were yep. going for? Okay, yep. perfect. Really good. Um, and I liked that there was like, because I do find that some plays are they're just literal plays, but there was like a little bit of dancing with their wands and their cloaks. So I feel like it was campy. Yeah. Nice little camp version. Um, the one part I didn't like about it, and also I read the book or play, whatever you want to call it, mm-hmm. is like the adult versions of Harry, Ron, Hermione, and everyone mm-hmm. are just like not at all. That's like not what the young versions of them would have grown no. up to be. It's just like, 
Who who are these people? Now I know. Yeah. Well, I mean, like, I'm happy that Hermione is Minister of Magic, but she's yeah, kind of but like, like her their personalities. It's like completely different. What? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like Harry's just kind of like whatever in the play, and I'm yeah, just like, he he's That's the boy, the boy that who lived. lived. Yeah, exactly. Put some respect on his. Yeah, name. or yeah. just like make him like more like he didn't really have a punch that he had no, in the he movies. Was, like, lame. In the book. Yeah, but I digress. Mm-hmm. I thought it was still good. Yeah. Um, of course. Next is Beetlejuice. Mm, so I saw is, that. This is really good. I liked the main guy. So now we've crossed the threshold into good. Yeah, this is. I would. Well, no, I think. I think after Paradise Square. Okay. Is good. So starting with Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, these I've all wa- left with a smile. Okay. We'll say that. Um, one smile out of five. Okay. Um, but yeah, so Beetlejuice. I really liked the music. Um, That's a pretty playbill too. Yeah, it's really pretty. This is one of my favorite playbills. Yeah. Um, I love the Dead Mom. Song. Dead Mom is Dead Mom a, is so good. That's the only song I really took away from Beetlejuice. The, I like the one of Miss Argentina. Couldn't tell you the name of it right now, but it's the green girl that's like the receptionist of the underworld. I, and yes. she was Miss Argentina and she like slit her wrist like or when, something. When Lydia sang. Yeah, she's really pretty. Yeah. And I like the stepmom with the little bun head. Mm-hmm. She was funny. And she's currently in spam a lot right now. I did not like the what Beetlejuice did to his voice. Uh, that, that. Yeah, that. <laughs> he sounded like Mike one. Wazowski kept his speaking voice while singing. Not like, Billy Crystal. He didn't sound like Billy Crystal singing. Uh-huh. He sounded like Billy Crystal's speaking voice as Mike Wazowski sing in singing. Yeah, form. could have. Re- I wanted to throw a throw laws and jet. Hey, yeah. I'm just like clear. It your really, it was like ooh, it was like unpleasant. Do you, you saw the movie? Yeah. Like Michael, I don't think Michael Keaton is that like. No, and it's like, like people like British people don't have an accent when they mm-hmm. sing for whatever reason, he could have taken that. He could have made that choice yeah, just to forego the Beatles accent. Do the singing accent. voice and then maybe, yeah, yeah I guess that would have made mm-hmm. it better if it was his only his speaking voice. Or at voice. least light. But like I skipped the songs it and it's like, like oh my grading. God, like torture. Yeah. Yeah. But still loved it. Of course. Um, and then Phantom. Mm-hmm. Never I wish seen I would that either. You have not seen no. Phantom? Well, that was my first now. one. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I... Wish I would have seen it when I was younger because it was, I think it's the longest running musical. Is it still on Broadway? No, it, no, closed. it just closed. It right? just closed and like a lot of people were like up and on. But this is, I think, Andrew Lloyd Webber. So he, like Bad Cinderella. Mm. This. Wow. So like that's his like body of work is like can be horrible or can last on Broadway for, I think it was 30 plus years, wow. I want to say. Um, but I saw this the week that I moved. I need to watch the movie. Yeah, that's with like Gerard Butler. Yeah, broke your love, Rossum, Gerard think. Butler, and that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you, I think that was my sexual awakening. Was really? Gerard Butler the Phantom? <laughs> so hot? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, I had no idea. Maybe even the scarring. Uh huh. Hundred percent. I think would that's that what. Oh, he has more? scarring. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. under the mask. That mm-hmm. would be why he's covering. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. But this one's great. I just wish because you can definitely tell as a show gets older. Like even in like Chicago, I had mentioned and stuff like that too. Um you can tell the cast is kind of like tired Mm -hmm. because like, and like audience, the audience wasn't that big in this because it's just like, no one's really going to see Phantom at that point because everyone's already seen it at this point because it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, But I mean, still like a classic and it's so good. Um, Book of Mormon, one of my favorites. Again, never got to see it with um, AR, Andrew Rannell. I did, I did. I had the privilege and Josh Gad. Yeah. Oh my God. I'm shocked that like, that's still allowed to run. Well, so when I went to go and see it, it was because I was trying to introduce a friend of mine to Broadway, just being like, what would be a safe one? And right. like, I had described Wicked to him and he was like, no, I don't want to do that. Right. And then I was just like, this is by like the creators of South Park. And he's like, oh, that's like right up my line. Like, of course it is. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like w- at that performance, like four people walked out, like because it was like offensive. They were yeah, it's, yeah, it's pretty offensive, mm-hmm. but still. I think it's, I yeah. Think it's good. Oh, it's, it's I just, mean, I personally, to say, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, hmm? <laughs> hey, hmm? hey, we didn't say anything. <laughs> um, six, I really love. Um, it's like completely different than anything I've ever That's seen. Someone Channing just, likes, right? I think so. Or, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cause it's, it's a concert. Mm-hmm. So it's not like there's no plot. There's oh. nothing. It's basically just literal. Like it's like six songs about each of Henry, the wife's, Oh, Henry VIII's ex So there kind of is a plot. Yeah. So it's just like, it's basically, so it's divorced, beheaded, died, divorced, beheaded, survived. Like literally in that order, which is, I'm like, that's so crazy that like, it's like, it lines up yeah. basically almost, except for the girl that like survived. Right. But, um, so it's like Anne Boleyn, she got decapitated, 
trying to think of the Howard, maybe. I can't remember all their names, but okay. Catherine of Aragon, okay. all of those, because he had so many ex-wives. Do you so. know what he looked like? Fat and I'm... ugly. <laughs> oh, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah. Oh, and is that six right there? This? Yeah. yeah. What is that saying? Who were the six wives of Henry? The V I I I. Yeah. Eight. Eight. Yeah. Yeah, he's not the best looker. Like that sucks. Oh, wait, maybe that he's able to have eight see? wives and I can't get a boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a different time. That was twenty yeah. plus years ago. Yeah, it was one plus. <laughs> Ew, he sucks. Yeah. Let's so. cancel Henry the Eighth. Yeah. I love that full body shot of him in the bottom right corner. That's His pretty. legs. That's really pretty. Yeah, I know, scary. Is that what the other Boleyn girl is about? Yeah. Because okay. I forget who was the other, because it's the... Does she, one of he, them survive? Yeah, the last one. Mm -hmm. Couldn't tell you who, what her name is. But Anne? she survives. Maybe. I don't know. No, Anne, out of my ass. Anne Boleyn got decapitated by a guillotine. Okay. Yeah, she got... What did she do? I think she was whoring. I think that, because okay. that's what the other Boleyn girl is about is... Oh, I think her being a slut. Oh, perfect. And then that was punishable by death back in the day. We'd all be dead okay. at this point, right? Some of us in this room. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> um, but I just liked this because it was like, it's just like a concert. Yeah. Like you can still, like people were standing up during my thing. Like dancing, oh, I love that. Which is really fun. Okay. Um, I, I'm, I'm a big sucker for when people, uh, when the show comes out in the audience even though I'm, again, usually oh towards God, the I back that. and I never get picked, but one day I'm hoping. I'm trying to think if I've seen a show. I know I've seen a show where they've come out into the audience, but Spam I'll, I'll Spam let you know come out. if I think of it, Peter. Yeah, just pause me at yeah. any point. Be like, T. Um, yeah. Dear Evan Hansen, we're getting up in the good ones. Um, I saw it with... Who's Ben Platt's boyfriend? Noah Galvin. Yes. So it was, I think, either one or two iterations it's after. It's crazy that two Evan Hansons are getting married. I know. Crazy. Yeah. Um, he was great in it. Um, and I saw it with um, my friend Casey. I think you know Casey. Yeah. yeah you know Casey. And her mom came. Because every, every time they come, her mom gets us really nice tickets. Oh, so that's so sweet. Um, this was one. Company was one that we've gone to. Six was one that she took us to. So all like, the big ones always mm -hmm. be like, let's go to that. Um but I was sitting in between them, and at the time I had known nothing about their family life or this thing, and I guess it hit a little too close to home for them. Oh, that's tough. And they're doing like outstretched arms. I'm literally <laughs> sitting back. I'm like sobbing, crying. I'm like, I hate that I'm in between them right now. And then it's like the one show where like the music cuts after um, So Big, So Small, mm -hmm. the mom song, and... Um, at, like people were like dry, like <laughs> like could not breathe, and I was like, oh my god. See, I was like completely unaffected by all of the parents' pieces. Like you did not even get did, choked no. up. And my my parents are perfectly fine, and I was sobbing, crying. Oh no, I like I don't know why. Like any parent songs, like same with next normal. Like I, they just like bore me. Did you get choked up at any Evan? I songs? got choked up at every single words Evan fail. Song. Words fail, waving through a window, all, all of them. I oh, even those it. ones? The second the parents come on, I'm just like a little bit checked yeah, out. Yeah, disassociate. yeah. Disassociate. Um, the thing about Dervin Hansen, Peter, I tell people that it's based on my high school. Mm -hmm. And I know that, I don't know, I'm, I don't know if I'm telling the truth. Because mm -hmm. I know it, it came from something. Mm -hmm. Like I didn't just pull that out of thin air. Mm -hmm. But I'm not sure. Um, Did if you it, have like a... Dervin Hansen... You're talking about like if the anyone plot brings up Europe Hansen, I'll be like, oh, it's based on my high school, but I don't have the facts and resources to back that. Oh, up. so like me asking you if like someone's brother offed themselves, and I don't know like how that's unpopular based on kid. My high school. Like someone printed think, a piece of paper that said, um, like "Doing fake emails." I'm doing horribly. Loved Europe Hansen, and then some a bully, the school bully stole. Like that, I don't think that happened at my school, so I don't know what I'm talking about. When did that pop Look, up in your head? Is that where you went? Yeah. Ardmore? Yeah, that's where I'm from. Wait. Okay, so the guy who wrote the music went to my school. Oh, so that's, that's what, and I, I apparently had gotten. That that it's happened. Actually about that happened, my yeah. Yeah, <laughs> okay. You were there. I was there. Okay, it's not about my school. 
Which is fine. <laughs> Which is fine. Yeah. Yeah. But you, I mean, no one has to know, no. except even though we're, we just recorded that. So um, next is um, Shucked. Which I really, really love. I mean, and independently owned is like, and Alex Newell can do no wrong. Glee. And you know, I have not seen Chucked. You haven't seen But Chucked? that's one oh that I gosh. really want to see. This is, I think it's, oh, it might be closing. I'm You're not kidding. Sure. But Alex Newell isn't in it anymore. And I really feel like it's like the, like he, or they, sorry, was so good. Shucked. Damn. Shucked when does close. <laughs> On January 14th, of, so of next year. Okay, so I have time. No, shut closes on Broadway. It's closed. When, when is that article from, if you click? <laughs> 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 it's like, I just couldn't be bothered. To, <laughs> this is why I'm like constantly spouting misinformation. It's like, I can't be bothered to click. I'll just go off of yeah, the so headline. Closes on Broadway January 14th, and this was posted. January 14th. 2024. That's misleading. In January. So it closed oh, so there? Or it closed it that day? Okay, this was published on January 14th. Shucked closes on Broadway January 14th. That's a little misleading. So is it closed? I think so. I think they were letting people know that it's closed. Okay, it's giving me the same. It's closed, Peter. <laughs> you on out? January 14th, Shucked closed. Okay. Believe it or not. Oh, wait, what does that say? Production in spring of what year is I? In Australia. Oh, so we have to go to Australia. Yeah, that could, could be, be fun. Could I wonder if they bring it to Kansas or Kansas, Kansas City. during our, our Wicked trip. Yeah, we could do a Kansas That'd be City. Really nice. But it World just, Court. I mean, like, really, like, I think this is like a quintessential, just like good musical. The story's good. The characters are likable. Really good songs in it. Funny. All that stuff. And but the, like, showstopper is Alex Newell. They're incredible. Important to note that you still have not placed Little Shop and Merrily. Yes, yeah. So those are still waiting in the wings over here. Yeah. Um, do you want me to put those in now or do you want me to go through the whole thing? No, I'm just, keep going. I oh, just wanted people just, to know yeah, that okay. like, if you love Chuck so much, Merrily and Little Shop are above that. I can say that they are above that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, next is Kinky Boots. Um, saw this with Brendan Urie. Oh, that's really yeah, pretty. Yeah, so that was like, I was like, okay, perfect. Yeah. Um, written by Cindy Lauper. The music was written by Cindy Lauper. Um, drag queens and everything. So it was really great. Um, it's just basically about this. I think he's like a failing cobbler is what makes shoes. Pretty, yeah. You think? <laughs> <laughs> um, and they're not doing well. And so then they're like, we need to find uh, a niche market. Fun shoes. So then we're doing drag queen high heels. Okay. And that's so it's really great. I had no idea Kinky Boots was about a cobbler. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's not what I thought when I looked at the playbill. Yeah, because I think he, the main guy in it makes these boots and then like it catches like, um, who at the time is just like a man walking by and then he's like, oh, I'll buy them. And then it's like, oh, wait. That's literally a, a little queen. shop in a different yeah. font. Yeah. And that's the Well, these don't need anyone. So that's well, a little different. But it's they're I don't want to keep saying pretty, but like they're pretty. Like the <laughs> they plants, are really the gorgeous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um yeah, I really love that one. The mm -hmm. music's really good. Um, you know Billy Porter? Mm -hmm. He was the original Lola. Oh wow. And this won the Tony for okay. it. So didn't get to see it with him, but got to see Brandon Yuri, which was really that's, pretty. As yeah, we've been saying the entire been, time. Yeah. Um Chicago. So funny enough, talking about stunt casting earlier. They had Pamela Anderson when I went to go and see it, and I'm obsessed with her after her documentary. Mm -hmm. um, and she was so good, like blew me out was of the Was she the lead? Walk. She was Roxy. Wow. She wasn't Velma. I think if she would have been Velma, I would have felt a little different about it. Mm -hmm. But um, she did great as Roxy. Um, she just has such a charisma and charm about her that I had seen Chicago a long time ago, and then I loved the movie. Um, but she just did such a good job in this, and so... Um, it kind of reinvigorated my like love of Chicago because I hadn't seen the movie in forever in that long and listened to the soundtrack. And then this reinvigorated movie, soundtrack, everything for me. So you know, all I know about um, of Chicago is the Glee cover of Cell Block Tango. Cell Block Tango, yeah. Yeah. Which do you think you'd be in Cell Block Tango? Santana? No, like, like <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was just thinking that. No, like pop, Repeat six, the question. squish, Mambo. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was the last piece. Of the no, puzzle. that would be lip So wait, sing it for lip shits. Wait, yeah. sing it all for me. Pop, six, squish, Cicero, lip shits. 
I think I was thinking of Cicero when I said Mambo. Mambo. Le- Mambo yeah. Number five. <laughs> Lip- <laughs> Let me see. <laughs> Lip shit. Okay. I think I'd be pop. Or the or the Russian one. Uh-uh. I forgot about uh-uh. Oh, you forgot you had completely I completely about forgot uh-uh. about uh-uh. It's because I don't speak Russian. So that's okay. why I forgot uh-huh. about it. Yeah. But she was, fun fact, the only one that wasn't guilty. I had Everyone else was guilty except for her. Really? And she was the only one that hang, hung. Hang? They hung? Yeah, they hung. Oh, I didn't know Chicago was this dark. Well, yeah, it's about people that got killed. Well, I didn't know that. (laughs) Sorry, Brooke. Well, you didn't tell me that. (laughs) Um, Next was Into the Woods. Sondheim. Yeah, Sondheim. I really like Sondheim. It seems like you Um, They did this at Lincoln Center and then brought it to Broadway, which Mm -hmm. usually that doesn't always bode well, but this was really good. Philippa Sue from Hamilton was in it. it was, oh my God, I'm the three named James, Brian Darcy. Brian Darcy James. Brian, yeah. Yep. Sorry, my dyslexia is kicking in there. No worries. Um, he was supposed to be in it, but he, I got the white paper slip. And, oh so my God. We're doing nothing worse. The Baker. Replied. Who was it? Jason Forback. Oh, that was nice that you got to see Jason. And then the role of Jack will be played by Alex Joseph Grayson. Okay. So Jason and Grayson. That's familiar. Do you know him? Not personally. I don't think I do either. But I also love Milky White, the little cow. Um, they did like a cute little like puppeteering thing with it. And I thought it was really, really nice. But I just like this one. Loved the movie too. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't seen the recent movie. Yeah, the one I'm with feeling like, like I literally have no grounds to be talking about music. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry I brought that out of you. No, it's fine. Um, I was feeling that way with Andrew too. I was just kind of nodding. And- yeah. Well, you can relate to this one because Brooke and I had the honor, the privilege, the... Funny group. Oh my all. god. <laughs> um I remember when they first announced it, I was like, okay, I'll I'll definitely like go and see it. But then I think something happened with like Beanie and everything where it just like didn't work out for mm-hmm. her. Um and then while we were waiting in the wings to see like who is gonna be the replacement for Beanie, because she announced because I think she was supposed to go through like July or right. something and she only made it to May. Yeah. And then they were like, Okay, we're gonna be announcing like pretty soon, like who's playing funny girl on like twitter and every like social media platform was like it has to be leah and then there was rumors that it was leah and i remember just refreshing my phone non-stop and then they finally announced it i got tickets instantly it is something that i can't believe like it's a once in a lifetime experience to see leah michelle as fanny bryce i don't know if i'd like actually be able to like give her enough kudos for how good she is in that like and people don't talk about like her acting too. She's a great, She's like, great. like her, like yeah, emotion, she really was. like, and I don't know how she can like make that the faces that she does mm-hmm. and sing that well. Like yeah. if I even like change my face ever, right. so I don't slightly, know how to act and sing at the same time no, or do, do you either separately. Too. That's true. You, can crank, you found out yeah, that, yeah. Um, but it, I mean, like Funny Girl is just such a good movie and like just the original production, the movie, everything about it is just like good. Yeah, they didn't stray. From the original, it was just a redo of it. And Which I appreciate. Yeah, because sometimes if it ain't broke, don't fix exactly. it. Exactly. Um, I.e. Bad Cinderella. Going back to the mm-hmm. bottom. Um, but yeah, it was just like, I have no words for how good it was. And then Ramin could not tell you his last name, but the, the main guy yeah. is so hot. Beyond. When he takes his shirt off. What's and he his has name? What's his last name? Ramin, something with a K. Kalu. Yeah. Kalu, something. I'm not spelling. What did you do with the K? R R A M I. Yeah, hold on. That sounds better. Karim Karim. Karim. <laughs> yeah. He was so pretty. So pretty. Yeah. Had about. I think he had a ten pack at some point of did it. He take his shirt off. Who mm-hmm. is that? Is Who's that Phantom? That? Oh my god. <laughs> he was Phantom. I think so. At one point. What is that why you Phantom? had a crush on? Yeah, yeah. Okay. 100%. That what was my sexual Phantom? awakening. <laughs> what happened to Phantom? Or should I watch the movie? Is it a spoiler? Yeah. Okay. Just watch the movie. We okay. can watch it. Okay. Yeah, we can watch the Gerard Butler of it all. Okay. Um, yeah, Funny Girls in LA anything. this weekend. Yeah, I saw okay, I I'm seeing it on Sunday. You can't Are see you it. it? Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah, on Sunday. Oh, is he? That's so exciting. Yeah. I'm excited. Yay. First time. Do you know who's playing? Um, I don't. Um, where is it playing? The Amundsen Theater Group is doing it. I've n- I got, I've not had good luck with touring. I got um, I've started to get ads for this uh, for Funny Girl and You've been um, driving past them. Yeah, and a strange loop. 
which just won the Tony, I think. Never heard of it. Damn, of bro, course. we got to get you <laughs> to get it. Yeah. Um, well, my last three, no spoiler, I have three playbills of it. I've seen it seven times, um, but I only kept three. I give out, I've given out my other playbills to those who did not keep theirs. I'm like, you have to keep this at yeah. least, is wicked. It's just like, there's nothing better. There's yeah, nothing really better different. than this musical. And if anyone else thinks there's anything better, they can argue with the wall because I will not hear it. Either. I will not stand I, for it. I can support this take. It's the only musical where there is maybe one song I skip, I think, at most, which would be Something, something Bad, bad mm-hmm. by Dr. Dylan. <laughs> <laughs> Played by Peter Dinklage, yeah. we just found out. Yeah. Voice, so that'll be yeah. real pretty. Yeah. Um, but it's just, I'm again, like going back to like The Wizard of Oz being my favorite movie and like finding out that like Al- Alphaba's not so bad after all. Maybe we shouldn't judge a book by our cover. Um, really, first time I ever saw it, I was in shock I, and the awe. The plot is Insane. insane and it ne- like i mean i've seen it so many times that it's just like it was really nice to hear when you went to go and see it that like it completely just like because you hadn't seen it in it so many years was as good as i remembered if not better i will say our fiero wasn't tough my favorite mm-hmm. or izzy's favorite do you no. mind me saying go for it or so connor's bad. favorite or anyone's favorite that i spoke to um and that was tough because my favorite song of any show tune is as long as your mind. So to have that kind of soiled. It just ruins it for you. Was really hard, mm-hmm. but everything else just almost made up for it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you had an understudy for. I had an understudy for Alphaba, who like, Alphabet. I literally can't imagine a Dean Menzel was that good. I, like they're all good. Like, like, I, like I've had understudies for, the Glinda sometimes are a little tricky for me. Right. Cause I think I'm a Glinda in this world. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, like, sometimes I'm like, I could just get on if you guys want me to. Yeah. She's not really doing it for we could just right. take her out yeah. and get in. And as we know, um, I can I can do Glinda, too. You can. Do you yeah. think you're more of a Glinda? No. As, we've discussed, a, yeah. as we've discussed, I did yes. have the role of Alpha Bubba. Yes. Do you th- um, what's your favorite song of Glinda's? None. Oh, you don't like any don't of hers? Like, I don't like Kristen Chenoweth's voice. Hot take. <laughs> I, I, it's, it's, too, it's too high. Like, too and, like, bad enough whiny. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. I love Thank Goodness. I don't think she's horrible on that one. I don't like, she's, not, she's absolutely like an incredible it's just singer. Not for like, you. objectively, it's just, it doesn't sit right with my eardrums personally. Okay, that's really yeah. interesting. Yeah. Because I love every one of her songs. I love her songs that she sings with others. Did you like her on Glee? No, skip her song. <laughs> Skipped every single Perfect. one. Perfect. She did maybe this time, I think, was one of them, right? Or she did. Yeah, it with... that's fine. Like, I would just never go out of my way to listen. Listen to her? Yeah. Okay. Whereas Good Adina, I'd, I'd go out of so many ways in so many lifetimes. Mm-hmm. Okay, show us where Marilyn Okay, little so talking. big reveal. I will say that they are right on top of each okay. other. Okay. So it's... You can don't place have them to, like... simultaneously. So Who's on you... top of who? Who's topping? Okay, so it's going Little Shop, okay. Merrily on top. Okay. I love Merrily so much we did front row mm-hmm. i know that brooke has talked about it at length but we're gonna do it one more time yep, and then we don't have to talk about it ever again well like, well I, behind closed doors we say that yeah. <laughs> um we sat front row mm-hmm. splash zone and like and we did get splashed you got i mean the i got a the huge eyebrow glob of really, eye. yeah. yeah um you hear stories about it and you see the clips and things like nothing that of cares. nothing compares to seeing just a rocket of spit launch from his mouth. I don't know how someone could have that much spit in their body. Because I remember the first time I really like it took me by storm was the Hamilton one, right? Where he it's just and you know they wanted to take that out of um, the Disney Plus the version, and Lynn was like, "No way! Why? What's so bad about it? Not literally nothing. That's what. That's oh what my saying. god! It's pretty. That doesn't even do it justice." The, it's it's also the the tra- not the trajectory like how far the distance it yeah. flies because like we probably could have been Love how him. far back do you think would have been like the maximum distance? I think distance? you could have gotten hit point blank range in the third row. Yeah, everything else would just kind of be missed, missed, missed. Yeah. yeah. But front row, truly, and like at points, like he's standing. Literally, Probably we like, like you look up and then you're just looking. Yeah, looking at, at him. At him. Uh, like, I'm not even looking, foot. eyeing. Yeah. Eyeing, oogling, like, yeah. googling, yeah. everything. Just like, it was truly like 
insane. And Little Shop is great. Of like I, I had such a good time with it. Like I would go and see both of them in a heartbeat. Show, yeah, it's, yeah, much Mary more fun. Is. But it was just like, I mean, I had a high the whole weekend, and it was literally like one of my favorite mm-hmm. weekends. And I'm glad that we got to share that together. Bless. But like. We had really like we had on Friday we were not able to speak about Merrily because we were also terrified of something happening to yeah. the cast yeah. that we would wouldn't not have got to see. Yeah. Show. Wouldn't say yeah. the name of the show, the actors yeah. in it. We were doing yeah. initials. Redacted. Yeah, redacted. Yeah. Um but it's going pretty high up. It's it, going Wait, what was adjusted from Q one? This? I moved Shucked up higher, basically. Oh, okay. Shucked went up higher. I'm trying to think. I think Phantom went up higher because I had Phantom behind the prom. Okay. And then I was like, no, that's kind of silly. Mm-hmm. And then Chucked, I was like, again, How to Dance in Ohio is really good, but I think like most people like also know about Chucked and like the music is definitely better in Chucked as well. Okay. Um, so that's why I moved it up. But I just love like the message of How to Dance in Ohio. So I think that's why I originally had it there. Okay. Um, but those were, it was a very small edit. Um, okay. But yeah, so Marilee's going on top of Little Shop and they're going on top of Company. Yes. So now that would be top three would be Marilee, Funny Girl, Wicked. Wow. In my collection of Look how far Jonathan and Leah have come from Truly. Spring Awakening. They made it into the top three of Peter Hussey's Playbill collection. Yeah. And they'll probably stay there for a while. Wow. So, um, but yeah, that's my Playbill collection. I don't ever foresee anything beating this like I just like I can't think of another story that could possibly like what the music blank the musical maybe a a musical of my life maybe Mm -hmm. that could be something something. maybe you will write and direct and produce and star in the musical that tops wicked Uh, yeah doing topping now yeah Yeah, that'd be pretty yeah um what's your favorite is it next to normal or no probably not Mm -hmm. like I think that show is the one that had like the biggest impact on me at a specific time but like Mm -hmm. I don't I think it was very time specific yeah um I think my favorite would be Wicked really oh my god wait yay (laughs) Wicked and then and then Merrily and then Funny Girl oh you're doing Merrily before oh wait I might do Dear Evan Hansen before Funny Girl Okay. I have to. I have to think this through. You cannot okay, think on the spot. I should have come prepared. I should have come prepared. But Wicked, I think, would have to be number okay. one. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there'd be like, there's any of that like Hamilton. Yeah. I can't get into. You didn't. I don't, no, I don't have my playbill. I okay. lost it. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Felt horror. I went out after going to see Hamilton because I was on such a high. Oh. So I guess I mean I could like it would be probably maybe sandwiched in between Little Shop and Merrily. Oh. Yeah. I don't want anything separating them. Okay, then I'll put it under a little shelf okay. if that makes you feel better. Yeah. <laughs> Above company, we'll do that. Yeah. But yeah, that's my collection. Oh, It'll Peter, keep growing. Thank you I think you I'm so at 28 total for now. So that. Yeah, of course, always. Wow. And go see Wicked, everyone. Go see Wicked. Um, <laughs> I can't wait to see that stack grow. And I, I can't wait to see more shows with you. I know, I cannot wait. Yeah. Alexa, anything? A little life. Me and Alexa saw. <laughs> very good, Alexa. Alexa and I went to um, London and we saw A Little Life on the West End. Completely wrecked me. I went in blind. She went in blind. That was the first production I had seen with no music. So I really appreciated me too. it. Yeah, it was really good. Yeah. Um, but definitely knocked me out like a freight train like i wasn't okay for a couple hours afterwards oh, but wow. i learned a lot thank you peter for sharing yeah of your course. stories yeah i hope this was an educational yeah, yes. session thank you yes it was peter yeah. thank you yeah i feel good now i feel really good okay, about this good. i was I'm nervous going into it class yeah, yeah. I, I could i probably could teach yeah. definitely like broadway 101 i couldn't do farther than uh well that. if i'm broadway 101 you're broadway five you're in the fives no, but you just graduated from Broadway 101. I just gave you a quick little oh, lesson. No, that wasn't 101. You don't think so? I think that was an intermediate. Really? Yes. Oh, my God. Yeah. I had no idea. Yeah. So if I've learned anything, it's that I am not like a Broadway fan. I'm just like a very specific uh, musical, some very niche specific musical. But I feel fan. like you would, you would do something like this. Yeah, I would. I thought I, at least I thought I knew myself, but yeah, anyway. But- but you live here, so it's, I mean, this was really, like, I wouldn't say it was right. easy, because it was a lot of money, but 
because there it's in my own backyard. True. Like if I would have lived here, I wouldn't have been able to talk about it. I wouldn't have even been on this episode. That's, but well, well, we would have something else. Yeah, we, we could talk about something else. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much. Peter, thank you so much. Thank you Alexa, for having me. Thank you so much. Kenny and Izzy, thank you so much. Zach, thank Thanks. you so much. Okay, guys, we'll see you next week. Bye.